So let's look at another example of dynamic programming in action. This time we're going to look at the example of counting the number of paths from one vertex to another in a certain directed acyclic graph. And the graph that we're going to use is very simple. It's just this grid graph here. So from every cell in this grid, uh, you can just move to the right or down. And the question that we have is how many ways are there to go from the square in the top left corner to the square in the bottom right corner? Okay, so from the cell 0, 0 to the cell 4, 4. We want to count uh, the number of paths. Okay, so kind of the first step in dynamic programming, we need to think of what the subproblem should be. So what is a problem that is, you know, maybe similar to our original problem that is going to help us solve the original problem? What's the, some kind of information that if we knew that, that would help us solve our original problem? Okay. So in this case, you know, something that's similar to our original problem that seems useful to solve the original problem, you know, if we want to know the number of paths from 0, 0 to 4, 4, seems useful if we knew the number of paths from 0, 0 to 4, 3, right? Because every path from 0, 0 to 4, 3, well, then I could just take one more step and arrive at 4, 4, right? So that seems like a pretty good choice of a subproblem. So let's see if we can make that work. So the in general, right, we're going to talk about the number of paths from 0, 0 to some other cell in this grid x comma y. Okay, so let's see if we can make that work. And that's kind of the second general step of dynamic programming is to develop some kind of recurrence relation using your choice of subproblem. Okay, so let's start off at the end. So if we are going to get to cell 4 comma 4, well just the way that the graph is set up, I'm going to have to either arrive there from the north or from the west. Okay, so I'm going to have to arrive from 4, 3 or 3, 4, those two cells. And of course, the, a path coming from 4, 3 is going to be distinct from a path that arrives to 4, 4 via 3, 4, right? So these are distinct paths. So the actual number of paths to cell 4, 4 is going to be the sum of the number of paths to 4, 3 plus the number of paths to 3, 4. Okay, so if we can solve these two subproblems, then we've solved our original problem, right? And of course, how do we solve, you know, figuring out the number of paths to 3, 4? Well, we can use the exact same technique, right? So in general, the number of paths to cell x, y, well, if x, y sits on either the top row or the leftmost column, then there's just one way to get there, right? If it's in the top row, you have to just walk along the top row. If you're in the leftmost column, you have to just walk along the leftmost column. So in that case, the number of paths is one. In all other cases, you can arrive from either the north or the west. So in that case, the number of paths to x, y is the number of paths to x minus 1, y plus the number of paths to x, y minus 1. Okay, super. So now we've developed our subproblems and we have a recurrence relation among the subproblems to solve our original problem and the subproblems themselves. So step three is to actually solve the problem. Okay, so again, as we mentioned in the first video, we have two options to do that. So I'll go through both of those two options. So the first option is kind of the top-down recursive approach using memoization. So we store the answer to the subproblems, which we've already computed. <clears throat> so let's go through that approach. Um, so here we're going to have our, our memo table, which I've called num paths to. And um, so this is a map where the key is uh, a pair of ints. So that represents a cell in the grid, you know, x comma y. 
and uh, the value is an int. So that's the number of paths to that cell. Okay, so we just um, initialize this numpath2 with our base cases. So again, if a cell is in the top row or the leftmost column, then there's only one path to get there. Okay, so that's kind of just setting up our base cases. And now we have our recursive function. So the base case in our recursive function is just checking if we've already solved a subproblem. Okay, so we just see if um, numpass2 contains uh, a certain point uh, cell. And if it does, then um, you know that's the number of paths to that cell. We've already computed it and stored it in our memo table. So we can just return that. Otherwise, if we haven't already computed the number of paths to a point, then we just compute that recursively by calling um, you know, count paths to the x minus 1 comma y and x comma y minus 1 of uh, you know, recursively calling those functions with, with those arguments. Um, and we go ahead, so in this line here, I'm returning that value and also assigning it uh, into our memo table. So I'm doing all that with, with just one line. So equals actually has a return value, which is the right-hand side. Um, okay, so that's it. So that's the uh, first option, the top-down approach with memoization. And we can also do it in a bottom-up way, uh, an iterative approach using you know, a topological ordering. So to do this, we have to ask ourselves, okay, what order, in what order should we solve the subproblems, right? So again, when we get to solve problem x comma y, we want to have already solved the problems x minus one comma y and x comma y minus one, because those are the values that we're going to need in order to know the number of paths to x comma y. So usually in dynamic programming, we don't literally have to like run a topological sorting algorithm. Usually it's, it's pretty clear to see in what order you can solve the problems so that you already have the answers that you need uh, when you get to a certain subproblem. So in this case, for example, we can just go row by row, right? So if um, we just first solve number of paths to cell 0, 0, then 0, 1, then 0, 2, etc. So I've written the numbers here in the table, the order in which we should solve the subproblems. And you see that with this ordering, then when we get to cell you know, 14, for example, uh, we've already solved the subproblem for the cell to the left and the cell above it. Okay. Okay, so that's the order in which we can solve the problems. We can just go row by row. Um, so here is the how we can do the iterative approach. So I just have two for loops because I'm just going over all the cells row by row. And um, my base case, you know, is if I'm in the top row or the leftmost column. And in that case, I know that the number of paths is just one. And otherwise, the number of paths is, you know, the sum of the number of paths to the cell above you and to the left of you. And those numbers I've already computed, right? So I can just um, take the sum of those. Okay, and at the end of the algorithm, I just return the last element of my numpaths to because that represents the cell in the bottom right corner, this n minus 1, comma n minus 1 cell. So that is the iterative approach. Um, yeah, so here's another example of dynamic programming. Um, first, we decide on the subproblems. Then we need to develop a recurrence relation among the subproblems. And we can either solve the problem in a top-down recursive way with memoization or a bottom-up iterative way, you know, using a topological ordering of the subproblems.